All right, so I want to show this uh, Compose app that's going to read a JSON file, put information into a spinner, and show things, including an image. Okay. And it was uh, dog JSON image compose. So let me make a project with that name. Um, and it's a compose one. And what did I call it again? Dog JSON image compose. Dog JSON image to compose. And this is, so here's the new one coming up. And then uh, most everything is in, uh, in this compose way, almost everything is just in the Kotlin, but not completely everything. Did I just dice? There it is. I am, uh, I have pictures of dogs, so I have to do something with drawable when that's ready. I have, uh, I don't have any layout because I'm doing compose, but I will have a raw because I'm reading a JSON file. Okay, so I'm now sort of ready, I hope. And so, let me close all these things. Too many things open. Okay. So what do I want to do? Let me work with the resources first. Here are my drawable resources. I have these pictures of dogs. They obey the rules. Uh, small letters, underscores, uh, that kind of thing. So I'm copying the dogs, I'm pasting them into the drawable, uh, paste. Okay, so I should have pictures of dogs that have the proper resource names in drawable. And what else? I What else do I have? I have a raw that has a JSON file in it. So I have to make right click new directory uh, raw and then in that raw i'm going to copy this and put in the json so paste okay so i have a json file this is a starts with the carly it starts with an object it has a property dogs and then that is the array of dog objects Okay, so now where do we go from here? I want then the everything else should be in the Kotlin. I didn't do anything with the UI. Everything's in the Kotlin. I'm going to open that in Notepad++. I hope I was careful enough to give them a dog JSON image compose dog JSON image compose. So I don't have to be careful in my copying. My theme has got the same name. My package has got the same name. Um, there are at least four places you have to watch out for if you've not named it the same. So I did name it the same to save myself some time. Okay. And I am overwriting this. Okay. Let me get the project back. And let me save everything. And choose advice and run this guy. Okay, so I should have, I'm expecting a spinner with uh, names of dogs. When I choose a dog, I want to show an image of the dog and some other properties of the dog. And I'm doing this in all in Compose. So I had no pre-existing layout. I'm generating all the things uh, all in Kotlin.
if it will build. All right. Let me start talking and then it will be finished building if I start. So this top part is me reading the JSON. There we go. Here my, here's my dogs. I'm going to the dogs. Okay. So I have this uh, spinner that I've made, a uh, drop-down menu. I choose uh, a dog, a dachshund, and I'm displaying the image of the dachshund, and I have uh, properties of the dachshund. Dachshunds in the hound group, they're loyal and easy to train, they're black, brown, or red, and they're 12 inches. Uh, and then a sheep dog, uh, they're 22 inches, gray or blue, intelligent and affectionate, and they're in the herd. Okay. So all that information is in my JSON file. Okay. So that's what I'm reading uh, first. Set up the input stream with the raw resource of dog data. And there was dog data. It was an object with the property dogs, which was an array of dog objects. So I'm reading dog data. I'm getting all the text of dog data. I started off with an object, curly bracket, started off with an object. So I start off with JSON object dog text. And then I went from that, the array. So the uh, JSON object I just made from that, I'm using the get JSON array method and the name of the property, which was an array was dogs. There's dogs, there's the dogs property, which is an array. So now I have my array of dogs and I called it my JSON array. I could have called it my dogs. I could have called it anything. It's just the name. I want to, when I typically, when I work with a spinner with, uh, then I usually like uh, a string array to populate the spinner. So I'm going to make, uh, and this was coming from my horse example. So you can see it still says horse. Um, getting the dog names. So I set up a uh, dog name array or list to work with the spinner. I'm looping through my JSON array. So here's my JSON array, it's length. I'm looping through it. I'm getting the name of the breed. My JSON array, getting the ith object of my JSON array uh, and getting the string value of dog name. And so that's bulldog and, and so on, old shepherd and whatever. Um, and then adding it to dog name that I will use with my spinner. The other things I'm gonna use with my spinner is I am going to keep track. I have this sort of parallel array of the what's in the spinner and this JSON array. So I'm going to work with my spinner. I'm going to work with an index. That's what's useful to me. And I need this sort of method, uh, associated method of when I, uh, I need to know what variable I'm going to change. And then I need some uh, method for doing the changing. So I have the dog index and the set select dog index. And I'm remembering them and I'm choosing dog zero, the first dog uh, as my initial dog. And now I'm making, building my screen. I have this usual surface thing. I'm, I have a normal column structure. And at the top of my structure, I'm going to have a spinner. <laughs> I've, I've uh, given you a, a presentation before about a spinner, but so this spinner code is uh, something written below, but you send it a label of what it is you're choosing, uh, the choices, which will be a, a list. So dog names was a list of the dogs. And then uh, what it is you are actually picking, we're going to pick an index and that sort of that, that method associated with the picking. After the spinner, there's an image when you have an image, there are two standard things that you have to have. Uh, 
the painter and the content description. And so the painter takes you to a resource. I have to work hard to get a resource that's changing. If it weren't a changing resource, it would be like r.id.bulldog. If I always wanted to show you a bulldog, it's easy. If I want to change, I have to work harder. Because what do I know? I know the names, but what do I need to change it? I need the IDs. So I'm setting the ID. That's what it wants. Painter resource wants the ID, but I'm going to the resources and getting the ID. And what, what name am I looking up? My JSON array, get JSON object, selected dog index, get string name, dog name. That's the, that says bulldog. That says uh, border collie or border underscore collie. And then I'm looking up the ID within the package name and then using that as the ID of the painter resource, that's putting the image in, uh, that's changing the image of the dog dynamically. Everything's based on this index. Index is my state variable. And then everything that depends on the state variable gets changed when I change the state variable. So when I use the spinner to change the dog, it changes the dog selected dog index. And everything, everything I'm displaying that depends on that gets recomposed. So the picture will be recomposed because it depends on the state variable. A, a picture also has a, a content description in case somebody is visually impaired and they want to have a description of that image. That's the content description. And we're doing that. We're doing the dog name there. Content scale is to make sure that the dog sort of fills the space. And what space is that? I'm using a 300 by 300 size image. Then under that, I have a row. I have a text that says average tech, average height in inches. And then I'm displaying the JSON array, get JSON object with the selected dog index, getting the string and specifically the dog height string. So here's a text and here's a text next to it. I got two texts next to each other by putting them in a row. So there's a row with two texts. One is sort of my label and the next one is my data. Another row for color, another row for description, another row for group. That's all the data I had about the dogs. The image was the hard one. Everything else is just text. And then here's my spinner function, which we've seen before, but let's talk about it quickly. There was a label that said, choose a dog. There were the choices, the list of dogs. What what we're changing when the user picks something in the spinner, we're, we're deciding you, we can work with text or we can work with an index. Because of the parallel array, we're working with the index. And then we need the method to do the selecting. This is the part I have the hardest time coming to terms with, but that's the basic idea. And then uh, the spinner text is what's shown. Uh, spinners in their action, uh, expand and contract, expand and contract. That's this, my expanded. So first it starts off false. It's contracted when we start. And then uh, I'm showing the label. That's the choose a dog. Choose a dog. That was the label. Then there's a box, that's what holds the, the spinner or the drop down, the select, whatever you want to call it. And then inside the spinner is something that's clickable. If you click on it and it was expanded, it contracts. If it was contracted, it expands. <coughs> um, this is the, uh, the, the centering within the spinner. And then there is uh, the text that shows the actual choice. 
So the text is showing the actual choice. There is a icon, which is the drop, the pointing down arrow. So there's this pointing down arrow, that's the icon. And then there's a drop down menu. So this is all the actual functionality. The drop down menu has this expanded property, which we set up above. Uh, if you dismiss it, then you collapse it. And now we're going to loop over our choices. And for each choice, we're going to make a drop down menu. The text will be the choice. And if you click on it, uh, you if you click on one of the choices, you are closing the uh, drop down menu. So my expanded is set to false. The spinner text is set to that choice. So when I choose uh, boxer, I the choice I clicked on boxer, so that the the choice of boxer became the spinner text, and then the selected index. I here's my boxer, and I'm looking through my choices, and I'm finding the position of a boxer within my list of choices, and that is my selected index. And there I'm at the bottom. But that is everything because that changes my uh, my dog index. And my dog index was my state variable. And everything that is view being viewed, everything I put in there that depends on that state variable gets updated, gets recomposed. All right, that's what I wanted to show. Recording that.